right. All right. I think we should just to it's 903. Okay. So um, the Seed School of Los Angeles County meeting of the Board of Directors, October 29th, 2020. It at 903 is called to order. Welcome everybody. <laughs> um, I, I'm just going to jump into it. I know it's, you know, last week was an, or I think it was last week was an incredible <laughs> moment in time for us. And uh, this is just going to keep getting us to where we want to be. So thank you all for making time to be here. And um, we will just do a quick roll call. Um, if we can, I'm going to, I'll call out your name. And if you can unmute yourself and say, that you're present, that would be helpful. Alaire has joined us. She's part of the C team. This may be the first time that you're meeting her. Um, thank you, Alaire. She will be um, transcribing the minutes. So um, it will be helpful for her, for her to put the voice and the face together. So we're gonna do roll call that way. Okay, so um, Ruth Salford, present. <laughs> Jackie Kimbrough. Present. Thank you. Sophia Echeverria. Present. Isabella Costa. Present. Sarah oh, 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 oh. Ali. Present. Thank you. I think that's everybody. Great. Um, also want to acknowledge that this is being recorded. So this is being recorded. Um, all right, so let's move into this uh, round of finance updates. Um, I think having Anita, Mike, Leslie, um, as we move through these items, maybe you can just uh, let us know what each of them, you know, what, what the high level um, important points are for each of them. And then we can move into the motions to approve and debate, et cetera. Um, so everyone has received those documents. So I think the first, Item is the proposal letters. So if you want to just talk through which which of those if someone wants to. Yes, uh, Mike, I'm going to make you the host so you can share your screen here. Who's walking us through? Is it Anita or Nilora or Mike? <clears throat> I think Mike is. I think Mike. Well, uh, I was imagining that I was doing AV support <laughs> and, and Anita was uh, doing the all presentation. Right. Like <laughs> but the uh, we can do this any way you want. It, can folks, first of all, see the first proposal letter that I put on the screen? Yes. Okay, yeah. and I've got them all stacked up here. So I thought I'd walk through them one at a time, Anita, but honestly, you could uh, just talk about That's each fine. one individually if you want. Uh, the first one is from XED for a $50 million new markets allocation. Sure. Uh, so Exed applied for a new markets tax credit application. Um, over, well, we applied a couple of years ago. We received 50 million, which is a huge amount. And it's just, I would say, incredibly rare that any allocatee would put all 50 million in one project. That's just like not, it. so uh, we're, we just do it in a way that we want to support schools and, um, and support this project. So we are putting, it's like taking all of your allocation, putting it on one, <laughs> one thing. So that's what this 50 million is. And in doing so, there are fees that maybe, is that what we want to call out, Mike? Um, I think we covered a lot of that last time, Anita, so I'm not sure we need to do that again. Uh, but it's really, we can certainly come back to that also as the boards has questions, because every one of the allocates here has fees. Okay. I have a question on the letter, Anita. Mm -hmm. Sorry, should I start or let you finish? No, nope. ask. Um, so there's a section on titled Loan Loss Reserve. Yeah. And, and success fees. And I could not, for the life, I read that probably four or five times. <laughs> yeah. And I, I could not understand what I was trying to get at. If you could help that's me great. understand that. Um, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let Mike explain it. I, ha I do understand it, but let's have, have it. Mike. The, uh, what, uh, 
we're required, we told the feds that we were going to put 98% of what we get into a, a loan, such as the loan that we were proposing to make to you. Uh, but one legitimate reason, uh, use of the money is this uh, loan loss reserve. So instead of the idea is we take uh, $50 million, but one and a half million of that 50 million, we're going to salt away in, a, in an account for seven years. Uh, you're not borrowing that. This is not part of what the school is borrowing from us. It's uh, just cash that we got from the investor. But the promissory note that the school is signing is 47.5 million, not 50 million, because we're netting out these fees, including the $1.5 million loan loss rooster. But the concept is because that money is sitting on the shelf, it could be that we need to tap into it over the next seven years because there's a default or some need for cash and we agree to use it. And in fact, XED has done that sometimes where it's dipped into that assaulted away money during the seven year term to cover some problem. And the idea is if that happens, we need the money back. It's an additional advance. You know, Even though we're only lending you 47.5, if we have to advance some of this additional 1.5, that's an additional loan, and that should come back. We hope you never use it, and if you don't use it, it pays XEDS back in fee. So that's the success fee, is that it, um, what we do is kind of say, if we're successful in seven years and everything works out, we get this reserve fee. I'm on the okay, last thank you. Last so I don't know, uh, Ruth, uh, I thought we would walk through all of them and come back to them, but it's really, do you want to talk about one at a time or what's your preference here? Oh, I think we can walk through all of them and then just uh, approve them in a... In a group. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really the, and, and I did also, if you can see it here, I don't know how big things are on your screens, but uh, the back end of this proposal is really the guts of the financial uh, structure that we see for seed LA. This is how we show us coming up with a whole $90 million. Dollars it. Maybe if you, you could enlarge it, Mike, because sure. it's, it's not. And actually just as an FYI, this was, I, I kept looking for the financial summary, but this wasn't included in the packet that the board received. So no. if we can receive just this last page, please. Will that would do. be helpful. Yeah. Will do. I'll Thank send you. it for you right now. Uh, but uh, this is where we show you the whole picture where the, we come up with whole $90 million and how you can see how we're putting stitching together these four different groups, except with the 47.5 plus three others to come up with 70 million, a little more than 70 million of new markets financing, uh, or actually 67 million of new markets financing, plus we get to additional loans to get to 90 million in total. So that's the big picture. Uh, so I'd like to move on to the next proposal unless, unless uh, there are questions about XED's proposal. Okay. Uh, next, you should see on your screen the LADF proposal, Los Angeles Development Fund, which is another allocatee just like XED. It wins the beauty contest saying we have great projects. LADF is a, an affiliate of LA City. Um, and uh, we've done business, we haven't done business with LADF before, but we've done business with a similar fund in San Diego. It's very common that municipalities and counties put up these kinds of organizations that go compete in the same beauty contest that XED competed in. So Los Angeles is offering us 5.2.5283 of new markets allocation, and this is final. So uh, the letter that is being presented to you uh, would, uh, if board approves, uh, be signed by Leslie here after board approval. And they also, like everybody, has some fees that are uh, outlined in here. One of the things that you see in this letter, I guess, I don't know if our letter does it the same, um, is that this program, you get extra points for, you know, jobs created in low-income communities and all kinds of community benefits. So that's it, the whole program is framed. This isn't designed for schools. It's designed to um, stimulate commercial development in low-income communities. So we were pleased to get it because this is a, a cheap allocation because it's affiliated with LA City. They are mostly absorbing their own costs. So it's, uh, you know, it's very cost effective. So we were happy to get this one. Uh, next uh, here, the we tried to say in the kit that in some cases, unfortunately, we were not able to come up with final uh, uh, proposal letters that are tailored to you in time for this meeting, especially since we had to release these materials to you uh, on Monday. 
Uh, our friends at Civic Builders have committed to 10 million, but what we're presenting to you here is just their standard form. They have not yet given us anything that we can sign, but we are asking today uh, to grant Leslie the authority to negotiate this with uh, Civic Builders. And it, the final will end up being something like this tailored to the specific deal. Civic Builders is a nonprofit um, organization in Los Angeles. Some people may know of Pacific Charter School Development, PCSD. Civic Builders is like that. It's a nonprofit development organization focused on uh, developing charter schools based in New York City. Um, the one thing that's different on this one is just they're more expensive for their allocation. That's just, they're, they're charging more than anyone else. I would say probably not, what they claim is they're at least in the midpoint of all of the new markets allocatees, but, um, and that wasn't something we could really negotiate. And one difference is Mike said, when you're the city or as you're gonna see chases, you know, you're big enough, you can absorb it, but this is a relatively smaller organization that uh, relies on the fees to do all its work. Next, we have a series of letters from Chase. There are three letters from Chase, including Woody. I don't know if we distributed the most recent one that came out yesterday, um, but uh, we will. I'll send that around with the addition with the financial summary uh, that we've discussed previously. Uh, but first, uh, Anita, do you want to give some background on um, the Chase? You know what you yeah. went through to end up with Chase. Mike, yes. can I just ask, just in terms of process, can we make sure that the the forms come from Woody? because I think the board just needs to actually have record that we sent it out to everyone. So if we, if it could just go to Woody so he can no send problem. it. Perfect, thank you. Um, so when, um, when we apply for new markets, or I would say that for the last two years at least, um, I was spending time trying to figure out who would be the right, um, or who would be a good partner and investor. And um, Chase and U.S. Bank really are the key players anyways in the field, just to give you a sense. U.S. Bank was very, very interested. Um, we have a good relationship. A key person is in Los Angeles. And um, we've just had, a, XED has had a long history of probably doing over 20 projects with them. And um, so they really wanted to do the deal. And um, as early as February 2020, they gave us um, some pricing at 83 cents a tax credit, which is very good pricing. And then things changed, COVID, everything else, and they, um, COVID and uh, losses and everything else, and they kind of dropped out of the market. And so we quickly went to two other players, Chase and Wells Fargo, and uh, We've been negotiating with both of them. Um, one of the key pieces is that we wanted a loan in addition to somebody buying the tax credits, and that's the senior lending piece. And that was hard to do. We have been negotiating this. Um, at the last minute, U.S. Bank kind of came back and kept coming back with new, um, with competing offers. And uh, but the fact that well, let me back up and just one piece of it was that Nilora, Mike, and I spent, I'd say two months talking to US Bank about doing a loan on the deal. And after two months, they backed away and said, no, we're not gonna do it. So, but that's like two months of time you're investing on phone calls and getting materials to people. And then, you know, two months later, they come back and say, nope, we really wanna do it. We really wanna do a loan. We'll, do, we'll match anything Chase does. But because of that previous experience, in the end, and that's just a way of saying, I made the decision to go with Chase. Chase, um, the key per point of contact here is Nicole Boone, who really, really wanted to do the deal. That's all I'd say. It's she just she understands that Los Angeles. Chase is also involved in the Jordan Downs redevelopment project that includes our partners on this development um, bridge and uh, Coalition for Community Responsible, no, Responsible Community Development and Prime Store. So um, in the end, we made that choice. Uh, I found it really difficult to turn down friends, um, but 
that's the, that's, I think it was the best choice for the school. Uh, I, I'd just like to mention that uh, uh, this uh, first letter from Chase, in addition, it's offering 75 cents per credit. Hopefully you can see that uh, on the screen. Uh, but here is where Chase offers the $4.9 million of allocation that we have uh, expected from them and that we're uh, showing on the chart. Uh, getting an allocation from a bank, we've never gotten it before. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> we've done uh, 34 projects and bank allocation is very hard to get and they only uh, put it into a deal when they really want to show how much they love you. Um, and and uh, for us, and 4.9 million is the maximum you can ever get because the other they also try to spread it around as much as possible. So typically a big bank like US Bank or Chase in the beauty contest would win 75 million. And then they try to get it out in nickels and dimes to projects that they really want to win. So anyway, so we got it. It's the first time we've seen it. it, it further evidence that the investor is really committed to the project. There are three letters here from Chase all presented to you. This is the first one that dealt with both the new markets tax credit investment and the allocation. The second one is uh, asking for a deposit. This is very common because, uh, because Chase uh, will engage uh, lawyers that will spend months on calls before they get paid. And uh, there's concerns about how, how do we pay lawyers if the deal doesn't ultimately happen. And finally, this is the uh, new letter for debt that just arrived yesterday. I'll make sure it gets to Woody and comes out to you later if you haven't gotten it already. Uh, and the key difference uh, here, Anita and uh, Nilura went to bat yesterday with Chase and uh, were able to get a number of improvements. First of all, 36 months of construction where before it was 24 months. And secondly, more importantly, the amortization period is now during, for the permanent loan 25 years where it was previously 20 years right here, 25 years. So that will help cash flow at the school level and makes it a, a pretty attractive loan. This also, by the way, we got a second loan proposal from another bank and we use that proposal to um, get better terms from Chase as you see here. The other bank was Bank of California, just in case people have relationships there. So these folks are asking uh, to get going on the appraisal right away. It is going to be a tricky project to appraise. Um, the banks, the way this works is a regulated bank must uh, order the appraisal itself directly. It's not somebody we can go say, hey, you know, we got an appraisal right here in the, in the drawer. Can you take this one? Uh -uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so they've asked that we move expeditiously uh, so that they can get started on the appraisal. Uh, Let's see here next. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. Uh, the next one that we are presenting to you, we do not, uh, sit, I think we mentioned that just like with the civic builders, uh, the, uh, we are expecting $25 million of financing from community development financial institutions, CDFIs. Um, and uh, the CDFIs that uh, we are talking to are very excited about it and are deep into their underwriting, but they could not develop a term sheet or a proposal letter in time for our meeting today. And so we are once again asking authority uh, for Leslie to negotiate term sheets with these lenders, provided that the term sheets are consistent with these terms that we've spelled out here. Um, these are fairly straightforward loans, leverage loans into the structure. We tried to spell out the key terms of the loans that we expect. Next, uh, in the happier news, free money, uh, $3 million grant agreement from Mark Ridley Thomas's office. Uh, here, we're uh, committing to put the money into the project and uh, also uh, earmarking up to $1.7 million of the $3 million for the bond that needs to be posted with LA City. I don't know if, Laura, if there's anything you want to say about that or not. And then finally, um, uh, John Campanile is a, uh, a registered investment advisor that works with um, many different charter schools uh, when they're going to market. So you hire an investment banker when you are going to uh, the public capital market, such as RBC or Stiefel or somebody like that. Um, but the way the rules work, uh, those folks are not your, they, they're not on your team. They're on the other side of the table from you. 
And so you need a financial advisor on your side of the table, but make sure that the bankers don't pick your pocket. And John is somebody that is registered and well qualified to do that. And we needed him now, not three years from now or five years from now when you're replacing the new markets financing because the, the, the lenders we're talking to don't really understand the public capital markets. So for example, uh, will the debt coverage ratios be 1.2 or 1.1? So we needed John, who's an expert in these markets to explain what we're gonna be facing in seven years to chase so that we could get, as you saw, a longer amortization. Instead of 20 years, it's 25 years because Chase was persuaded by John's pitch yesterday uh, that the capital markets are more lenient than the banks are on many of these points. Um, I, I would only add that yesterday I was on a phone call and um, it was really important to get Chase comfortable to have him uh, explaining the refinancing and have a, and have numbers and have access to information. So this was turned out very valuable in getting um, financing. In addition, I'm even getting the same questions from Weingart who's looking at a PRI. And so we will share, it's the takeout that he can explain well. His name's John Fan with Campanile Group. He's a Berkeley grad, Campanile. <laughs> Uh, uh, finally, um, because this is complicated, we took the time to draft some resolutions in advance. Uh, and we also in these resolutions tried to flag where some cases we're presenting uh, final documents. And in some cases, we've specifically asked for authority for Leslie to negotiate. And we tried to uh, sketch out uh, those protocols in the draft resolution. That's my report. It's a good one. <laughs> Woody, um, <laughs> Woody, can I just ask, did the Weingart one get in here too, or is that a different? I was, I was going to ask you, Anita, do you want to just- you're on uh, there. No, I, I've got that one up. Uh, I don't think. Okay. okay, then I'll, you're taking it back, Woody, or should I just? Uh, yeah, I can get it back. Let's see. There you go. I think I have to exit. I have to stop screen sharing. It sounds like we're well liked. <laughs> I think that's a very good summary, Sophie. Yeah, I really do, because people wanted to do this deal, and that yeah. um, uh, that really touched me after a while. Um, that I realized. I think, it, though, one thing I've learned about being well liked is you're you're not well liked when you're down when you really need it. It's only when everybody starts seeing that others are participating and, oh, you're really going to make it work. Right. So it, there's a tipping point that people think, oh, you're going to make it work. Then they all want to join. When right. you really need them, it's a little hard. Yep. The pile on, as they <laughs> call it. Uh -huh. On behalf of the county, I would actually say on behalf, we had some friends with the county and with Metro who were consistent. Absolutely. Up or down. Yep. Absolutely. When we were down, they made some ups. Mm. All righty. Okay, um, Anita, I believe this is the, um, the Weingart letter, proposal letter you were speaking to. Okay, so the Weingart Foundation uh, is considering a um, $1 million program related investment alone for seven years. I'd hope that I do hope it'll be at 1% interest, but they would like it the opportunity because they don't know what their board will approve up to 2%. Their board is taking, is reviewing this December 4th, only last night. And I mean, last night, definitely in the East Coast time did, um, they send us and say, could you get a board <laughs> resolution authorizing it before? Um, so this, did come last night. However, it fits within the broader uh, proposals. So we felt like we could easily bring it to it within the broader proposals. Uh, so the, otherwise it's author, it's saying that the board would borrow $1 million or the school that would borrow up to $1 million or maybe at 1 million with an up to interest rate of 2% payable and uh, due in seven years principal due in seven years.
Anita, I'm just going to say for the record that we believe when we submitted on Monday, we believe that there were other, that there could, that this proposal could be a part of it. I just want to say for the record right. um, that we actually believe that there was that the the umbrella of proposals that we submitted on Monday could include something like this. And so um, we apologize for not getting it to you before, but it. And, and I think it is, it is part and parcel to what we've already presented as part of, and we will need it for the deal, the larger financing deal that we are, we've just walked you through. And this I, I, oh, sorry, I have a question. Does this um, have to be signed by the secretary or can another officer, sorry, I'm sorry, or can another officer sign this? I'm not even sure, honestly. I, they gave us, I don't know whether we have to do this secretary certificate at all because they didn't say that. I believe just by passing the board resolution is good enough. Yeah, I think Ruth, they just need a resolution. Um, I think that is part of the packet for their board. They actually need a resolution, they need a, the minutes they need a revolution. Uh, revolution. Well, we all need a revolution. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we will add this item into this list of items without this uh, page, this signature page for the secretary, okay? We'll include this resolution. Yeah, you don't need this, the secretary's certificate. They, they okay. happen to Let's, give us a sample, so I think you could just pass a resolution and it will share it in the minutes. Right, so I'm just saying, just, just note that we will be passing the resolution that the, the first page, not the second page, just so mm -hmm. I just like to clarify that just as in some cases we have draft agreements, I think here we're also asking the board to authorize Leslie once again to negotiate the final terms with Weingart. So what you have here is a bare bones document presented by Weingart and it does not have the terms yet and we don't know who the borrower is, what the structure is. We're asking the board to delegate to Leslie negotiating those details. Mm -hmm. So um, would that be two separate resolutions? Yeah, I'm not sure. What they asked for was this was a resolution to accept borrowing these terms. So they were very clear before they take it to the board. I wonder um, if Anita, one way to do it is we could add it to the form resolution that I've already drafted as a 10th item and say that and attach it as a 10th item right. and be clear in the document, the word document that we presented that Leslie is authorized to negotiate the final terms and the, and, and the board did adopt the, the resolution in the form attached. Right, that would be the simplest. I think that'll do. Yeah, as long as they get what they need. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, okay. So what we will be, um, what the motion will include then is going to be um, including the update to the form that you were just discussing, right? The form yeah, you, you want to give me the screen back? Yeah, let's, let's create the motion so that it in includes everything we need to vote on and approve. I just want to make sure it covers everything we need covered. So you see table one? Mm -hmm. Do I need to make it bigger? Nope. So uh, the proposal, I think, I think this is a financing proposal. So I propose to make Weingart number eight and then move the others down to become nine and 10. Okay. Um, and we'll put in number, the new number eight, which be Weingart, we'll just say uh, status will be draft, you know, and I'll have a reference to a new attachment that is the uh, form of resolution that the board approved. Great. Um, I think- Can you guys hear me? I can't, hello? I, yep, you're good, Nalora. We can hear oh, you. Okay, I, I can't see myself lighting up when I'm talking. So the only thing I wanted to add, and I, 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 I don't know, we kind of left this one out, is we also needed to add um, the board's acceptance of an increase of our of XED's five hundred thousand dollar loan to see by three hundred thousand dollars, because that's the only way we're going to get the money to pay this these additional deposits plus some other costs that we don't have. We're running out of pre-development money, um, so I don't know, Mike, the cleanest way to do that. I don't know if we can ask somebody to amend this resolution to include that. Nalora, can you speak more to that? Because that was one of my questions. Is there's a lot of deposits associated with these, and I just wanted to to talk about how 
and then they're due like this week as well. <laughs> so right. I just right. wanted to see how we go about doing that. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. Yes. One thought it happens, all of this happened so fast was that, um, so Exed does have this loan from Walton Foundation. We have to pay it back. Um, I, we have authority to, without going to Exed's board, to lend up to 800,000. We have three, so that would mean we potentially we could lend another 300,000 to the board, uh, to Seed LA, which would then be repaid upon closing. Um, but it does, I think, Naylor, I think it's a separate item. I, I just can't figure out how you'd fit it into this, but okay. like, um, uh, I don't, I just- Well, but that means we're stuck on the deposits though, Anita. I know. I, no, I just no. could, could, go ahead, Leslie. Yeah, you guys. I don't. Know, I don't know that. I think we're stuck, but but it might actually be worth us for a second, like keeping stuff separated, because I think we're about to confuse ourselves. But for a moment, can I just ask? A because I just want to clarify what needs to. What? Where is there an approval needed, Nilora? Like, so Exit already has the authority to give the money. And so do you need, what do you need from Seed LA? From Seed LA, so Seed LA previously approved the acceptance of the XED loan for $500,000. So we need the Seed LA to approve an amendment to that agreement to accept another $300,000. Okay, great. So hold on. And then, and then what's the timing on that amendment of when that deposit needs to happen? Immediately, they've asked for it tomorrow not that we're going to get it to them tomorrow. yeah friday there's some that are due on friday yeah right. so there are a couple of things leslie we could do what were you going to say sorry no no i was then i was simply going to ask ruth what are you able to do via email so um what we could we could do it right now we um just need to agree as a board that we are going to be adding this additional item that we had not discussed and that had not been in the original agenda. We just all have to vote to do that, agree to do that. Um, because this is, there's a deadline. So we just need to, um, I don't know how, Woody, if you want to draft the motion, what we're talking about, what Laura just described. Um, and then we can um, make that a separate item that this is just all sort of Brown Act stuff. Make it a, a separate item we'll go through these others and then we will approve that one we will right. that right. works and then mike are you able in real is this a pdf that we're looking at right now yes okay i was going to ask if you in real time you could actually make a number eight there <laughs> uh i could come back to you pretty quick you know just do it on another screen okay that would be great because then it's we don't have to do it pending corrections. We can just do it right. as it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when Mike is done, Ruth, it sounds like we're going, you're gonna ask her to vote on the current slate of resolutions, approvals, and then there is going to be in another approval salt based upon amending a previous decision from the board. Right, that requires immediate action. Okay, great. Okay. It's just Let's, yeah, we'll just take a second and let Mike update the document. And then um, Woody, do you want to put the motion to approve this package on the screen when you can? And who's writing the language for um, the amendment to an early earlier loan? You, you mean the, the 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 motion or the actual amendment? Well, I think. Whatever. You mean for right now? You're talking about now? Yes. Right, for what we need to approve. 
We need the language of what we need to right. approve. Right, Neil, you could you didn't you draft it before? Just the language that says an additional. Um, yeah, let me go back to my. Okay. Woody, was that it on the screen? Th that was what I was trying to do, kind of live as we were talking. I don't know if this is if the, if this is the language that we want, but this was how I had started it out. So, Woody, my my understanding was that for the. Um, for the agreements that are in draft form, we are granting Leslie the authority to negotiate as well. And so I wanna make sure that that is explicit in the in the motion. This is it, this is actually, this is for that, the, yes, for the, yeah, for the first packet you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. But this is actually not that. This is what Nilora was referencing, correct, Woody? Yes, this is the second one for the immediate uh, action on the amended proposal was the second one that Nilora's referring. This first so, one here is the one that speaks to the, the broader resolution that had the eight points that Mike was talking about earlier. And I think that one does specifically call out um, the ability for Leslie to negotiate on behalf of CLA. So that should be in this document here that we're looking at. Correct. Yeah, where's right. The primary element of the right the conditions yep okay so well it's just i'm just waiting for mike to update it so that we're accurate when we vote no pressure mike uh, <laughs> <I'm not sure>. <laughs> <laughs> All I've really been able to do is change the chart. What do you, you want to give it back to me? Certainly. Can you see a new table? Eight, Weingart yes. PRI? Yes. As a form? So yeah. I haven't yet edited the text, but I will add appropriate text to describe what the Weingart PRI is so that we are referencing it and approving it in the, in the document. Okay. All right, so then let's go back to the motion, if you don't mind. Sorry, guys. No problem here. Okay. Would someone other than me like to bring the motion to the floor? All right, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll bring the motion to the floor. A motion for the Seed LA Board moves to accept the funding proposal as drafted and presented at the October 29th, 2020 meeting. Um, sorry. I was, pending any revisions and corrections as discussed and agreed upon. Um, we need a second. A second. What I want you to do is- Okay, I'll pass the seconds. Um, all those in favor say aye. However, I'm just gonna actually call you guys out if you don't mind, just so we're at where it's clear. So- um, one those, second. Who, who was that that seconded? I and mean, and Isabel. Isabel, okay. Isabel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to call your name and have you vote um, it, however you want to vote. Um, OK, so Ruth Stalford, me, I, yes. Jackie Kimbrough. Aye. Sophia Echeverria. Aye. Isabella Acosta. Aye. Jen Price Lesher. Aye. Did I leave anybody out? Sarah, Sarah Ali. Ali. Aye. Sarah. Sorry, I'm scrolling. Sarah Ali. Okay. It's unanimous. 
Am I correct? I have everybody great. Motion. Oh, sorry, motion to motion has passed. Okay, so now what we need to do for this next, um, let's see, did we get a draft that um, has- I the dropped it in the chat, Woody, if you wanna cut and paste it onto your motion yep. form. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Awesome. So while they're doing that, we need to actually agree to, um, hang on one second, let me get the right language. <sighs> agree that there is a need for immediate action um, and so that we can add this item to our agenda. Um, so all those in favor of bringing this motion to the floor based on the need for immediate action, I'm just gonna go through everyone to vote again. So Ruth Stalford, yay. Jackie Kimbrough. Yay. Sophia Echeverria. Yay. Isabella Costa. Yay. Okay. Jen Price Lesher. Yay. Sarah Ali. Yay. Great. Unanimous. We can bring this motion to motion to bring this motion to the floor has been approved for immediate action. Okay. I will now bring the motion to the floor. The Seed LA board moves to accept authorization to amend the Exed loan to Seed LA facilities to increase the amount by 300,000 for a total loan of 800,000. Additional funds are needed to cover both the deposits being requested by the various funders and other pre-development expenses that need to be paid before the closing of construction financing. Second. Do we need to put any, can I ask really quickly, do we need yes. to put anything um, in terms of the repayment of it immediately upon closing, or is that because that was included in the five hundred thousand dollar loan agreement? We do not important. That. A good good note. I think it's the same terms as the existing loan. Same rate. Uh, same okay. maturity date. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Okay. So motion as it stands. Is there um, a second? Move approval. It's Jennifer. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer seconds. All right, all those, well, I'm just gonna call your name and you can vote. We'll keep it simple this way. Ruth Stalford, aye. Jackie Kimbrough. Aye. Sophia Echeverria. Aye. Isabella Costa. Aye. Jen Price Lesher. Aye. Who's puppy dog? Sarah Ali. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, Seed LA board moves to accept authorization to amend the exed loan to Seed LA facilities to increase the amount by 300,000 for a total loan of 800,000. Great. Look at that. We did it. All right. Good work, everybody. <laughs> so, well, we were going to take a break um do you want to is there a finance update that you guys wanted to share or did we cover everything anita what was our you guys i'm sorry all time seems to be merging together oh. in my head um i think the well, you said finance, Ruth, so I'm not sure if you mean finance or all things fundraising, but if, if I'm guessing it's all things fundraising. Okay. Um, just an update on where we are with that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. So Anita, I'll just do a couple highlights and then we can get into any weeds that we like. Um, I think we discussed um, the potential of a anonymous donor, I think at the last board meeting, I think everyone saw the video at the groundbreaking. Um, I will just say that in terms of um, the Beck's gift, like literally 45 minutes before the groundbreaking was when that um, gift was officially, the, um, the gift agreement was signed, like literally I was in the car on the way to the groundbreaking when it became official. And I'm sure those of you who fundraise know, like I was, like Anita and I were sort of like 
come on, send it, please. Why don't you? <laughs> Um, and I so don't even fundraise and I'm sweating hearing about it. <laughs> um, and so I think the board has that gift agreement, but if not, we'll make sure it gets to everyone. Um, so that gift agreement, remembering that it was an initial $10 million and then when the school is complete, um, an additional $1 million will come. Um, there are some terms and conditions that are outlined and it was really about quality of the food gardening program. And then the seed foundation as um, the owner of the seed motto um, made, um, we actually committed to ensuring the quality of that of said program. Um, I think that was a term and condition for the family. And when I say for the family, that was not through like their, their person, it was actually through the family themselves, just wanting to make sure that it was quality, wanting to make sure that it was based upon best practices, wanting to make sure that it was reflective in how our students um, had access to food. Um, so that gift agreement is, that gift is official. Um, I'm trying to think, Anita, have there, oh yes, we actually met with, so after, to Anita's point earlier, I think the night after the groundbreaking, we got an email from Broad, um, um, and, and I will say that is a relationship we have been, we've been having conversations for 20 years, but specifically for the last five, and it's been up and down, and so I think on Friday, we met with the folks from Broad, and they have sort of made a soft verbal commitment to potentially a million, to at least a million, maybe 1.5. But I think we have an email this morning saying that may take, you know, they may have to spread it out over a year or two or three. Um, I, Anita, am I forgetting any, any, Anita, Rebecca, anything in the last like seven days? Yes. Um, Just conversations you've had, yeah, we're, we're Westbrook. Russell Westbrook and um, yeah. a Ram player that we've pursued, um, Jalen Ramsey, and uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, we have two I, pending um, applications that we've submitted with Crail Johnson and Carrie Estelle, which we'd really like to have meetings with their staff if anyone has a connection there. Working and, on that, at least the Crail Johnson piece, Rebecca. Perfect. And then working on Doheny via Rob Smith, who wasn't able to attend the groundbreaking, but expressed a lot of interest in learning more. So I'll let you know next steps there. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, the Jalen Ramsey piece, he, he gave, um, I think it was a million dollars to a school in Tennessee, and he announced, it was announced at the game, and Rod and Ruth both pointed out that he wants to make a donation to a school in Los Angeles. So... We're out to him. Um, I, although I think the timing would be next year on that gift. Uh, LA 84 Foundation, Dodgers Ownership Group. Those are two that we've briefed in the past and are just, it's kind of become a little stalled. So if anyone has any relationships there to boost those conversations, that would be great. Yeah, so I think Anita, anything else? Well, I just wanted to clarify that all of the funding you approved, we are on an absolute deadline to have to close this by January 15th. Um, our goal is probably even the week before being ready <laughs> or closing it. So absolute deadline. However, we can take in money afterwards and it will reduce, you know, we've structured, we will structure it so that it reduces the debt and helps us uh, support the school in lots of ways. So even though there's this deadline, we will continue to raise money. And some of the commitments, a few of them, um, are coming in over multiple years. Sorry, Anita, can you repeat that date again? January 15th. Thank it's, you. It's hard coded and it, the key aspect of it is that um, you cannot, apply for another round of new markets tax credits um, unless you, for our case, unless we have spent it by January 15th. Nilor, we are actively applying now. It's an application due um, 
November 16th. And uh, so, but our, one of our uh, partners, Civic Builders, really the way that they had to get comfortable that we really could close by January 16th. Otherwise they would have committed to other projects because they, they really need to make sure in their program that um, we did that. So we had to give them comfort that um, and Mike has done this many times before and herded. So each of those partners <coughs> have attorneys. So imagine the calls and the fees <laughs> that go on. And I think uh, Mike is planning to start those next week. So with the goal of closing early January, Mike, is that right? We'd love to close this year because we think the permits will be ready, but the investors uh, discouraging that. So January 15th at the latest, but hopefully early in January. Yeah. And the discourage it just to say is for tax purposes, people chase is the investor and they, for their own tax purposes, want it in the 2021 year, not 2020. That's it. Wow. Wow. Okay. So can I just um, change, change the subject and can we talk about the groundbreaking for a second? Because we didn't get to do that. I just wanted to make sure we all, we got through this. I know. So maybe just a little round, everybody, little uh, comments. How you feeling? It was amazing. That's how I feel. So just, just want everybody to have a chance to actually speak in person about it. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to add, like, I knew that this is just such an amazing thing that I'm a part of, but like the immense sense of pride that I had as a result of it was just like, it was a little overwhelming. Like I was watching this and just thinking like, I can't believe this, like we're at this day and at this moment. And so um, it was great. And it was great to be on the chat with people texting, um, people updating. And so um, just immense gratitude and appreciation for everyone. And, it's, and a deep sense of pride as well. I agree. It really was amazing. And in particular, um, I thought Leslie's reaching back to old Southern roots was just particularly effective. It was really, really wonderful. And Anita, where, well, you're not on my screen right now. There you are. Okay. You were wonderful too. So I felt a lot of pride, but what I really felt was a lot of the enthusiasm and the interest of the people who were there. And I guess that's probably why we invited them, <laughs> but that energy seemed to spread. I had people at my office, which is very close by, who really, really wanted to come. And there were other community folks who would have loved to have become, to come. And that just spoke to how people are learning about it and being there and seeing it because they, all these folks saw it virtually. I think it's just increasing the positive impact in the community. So thanks for just doing a wonderful rollout. I was also really just overwhelmed with the significance of the milestone event. It was such a joy to watch and felt that same sense of pride that you described, Isabel, and that same energy, Jackie. Uh, Leslie, your land acknowledgement was so powerful and I deeply, deeply appreciate that, the expansive way in which you did it. And Anita, the work you did to really engage everyone in feeling the importance of this moment. I mean, both of you did that beautifully and all of the guest speakers as well. So I think it was overall fantastic. And I know a ton went into making it all happen. So thank you all. Um, for me, it was just, it was like a, like a continuation of a tradition because the only groundbreakings that I've ever known anything about really have to do with seed and back in the day, because I can say that, <laughs> um, we put a lot of emphasis on the word seed. And, you know, I, I think that our, our mission had, you know, these, these themes of growing and planting and you have to break ground to do that. So it's always just such like an excellent symbolism. Um, and I was worried that like, I don't know. I was. I, f I think that I had some anxiety about like not being there, and like whether or not it would be as real if I wasn't in attendance. But no, it was still hella real. So that was. It was great. It was just great all around. All right.
Right. Anyone? How does anyone follow that? Sophia, thank you. Um, I just want to double down and also express gratitude for the expansive um, way in which, to, to quote Sarah, um, Leslie, that you, you embrace the land acknowledgement and the community. Um, and so thank you. And I love, I love that, that the seed is planted. Um, so thank you, everyone. And there were so many people, so many people, both present and virtually. How many people actually ultimately attended the virtual presentation? I know on the Facebook stream, there were about 67, I think, at the peak. I'm not entirely sure on the Zoom. I know we had close to 200 registrants, though. So, um, wow. yeah, the, the demand was definitely there. Phenomenal. Congratulations. Just so excited to be part of this and deep gratitude to all of you. I also appreciated how safe you were and how you kept your masks on. <laughs> I was feeling very nervous. Yeah, there, there were there were some some men whose names I will not mention who were not using best practices, and so thank you for representing us in a way where you prioritized uh, health and safety. Um, and also, just like continue with props to the person who kept coming out to wipe down the microphone. Like, <laughs> yeah. I have anxiety for that person, and I appreciate them so much. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I will not be in a picture not being socially distant. And so someone wanted to take a picture and I was like, yeah, no, that's not happening. That won't be the picture that goes viral. <laughs> Ni Laura, Mike, Woody, I just don't want to leave out anyone. I just want to make sure everyone on the board had a chance to speak before I said anything. Um, no, I, I think it was an inspirational moment and really kind of continue on and, and piggyback on what everybody else said. I literally had three or four screens open because I was trying to watch it on on both Facebook sites, on the Seed site, on uh, Zoom, just so I could kind of see how the, the experience looked from every different angle. So, uh, you know, I have my own technical, technical difficulties, so to speak, that I kind of shared with some of you all before, which made it a little more nerve wracking probably than it, than it needed to be. But um, no, it was it was a, a, a real moment. Um, I think for me, you know, personally, professionally, and, and for this group, um, for us to, you know, really kind of put our stake in the ground, literally and figuratively, in, in that in that community. So uh, proud to be on the journey with each of you all, and um, looking forward to to continuing forward. Well, well done. I mean, Laura, were you going to say anything? Um, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> no, it, it, it was a good day and it was just happy to reach that milestone. Like I said, after we started this journey two years ago with the application to the county. So it was just good to get to that day. I don't have anything to say. I don't either. It was great. And I, the one thing I would say is we really didn't orchestrate this. Um, so the count, a lot of cre the credit for the you know technology and the met the videos and the timing and all of that was orchestrated between the county and the metro and who they hired and all of that. So they did a great job. I'm actually is Rebecca still on the line? Did she, did she yes, so I, mostly we didn't orchestrate it, I would actually say, right? Like we didn't like they bought lots of technology and they bought lots, they bought lots of things. But I would say that Rebecca really did provide some order, right? Like you can imagine, um, Woody, how much of a control freak I can be. Um, but Rebecca helped me not to have to be, right? Because I think she she managed the um, I think our commitment to excellence as a team and as an organization and so where where we felt like it was out of sync and then also helped us to manage the relationship between all that was occurring and the um, and the the cornerstone donors right and so like all of a sudden 
the cornerstone donors people were in conversations with the county and you got it i have to tell you like those were my most nervous conversations <laughs> over the last two, two weeks right because because you don't have a gift agreement and everything that happens is a reflection of you and so i think that um just navigating all of those relationships over the last couple of weeks you know heads off heads off or hats off to anita um, and all of the communication that had to take place randomly at the middle of the night, you know, like there was never a moment in time with that cornerstone donor where they didn't want an answer, like, like you know, immediately. Um, I do think that it's just, an, it's appropriate to acknowledge that, right? Like, you know, shepherding that gift, that significant of a gift, um, Anita, what, maybe over six weeks or so, maybe two months, um, there were some nerve wracking moments. And I think that Anita, as our point person for that relationship, um, really had to navigate, you know, the lift and the push, right? And then the finesse. Um, and I think that was definitely a challenge. And so I just wanna acknowledge the work done um, you know, I've never carried a child, but I know that that first trimester is a fragile moment in time. And I think the gift that Cornerstone gift went through every, every stage, right? Like getting it delivered was no small thing. And so I just want to publicly thank her again. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, and yeah, it definitely was a team effort. And I, want to second the acknowledgement of Rebecca, like the banner and the names and all of that. There was significant amount of, of work. Um, I was really just referring to the videos, which I was impressed that they were able to pull off. I, I was impressed that they were able to make, create a video where much of the footage, I mean, like Leslie was filmed over Zoom. I was, you know, so it was impressive how it, it was pulled off. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a great event. Um, I also want to just just be really clear post event. Um, there's a huge lift that Mike and Neela are doing in with these um, lenders to make to pull this off. And so Mike is not there physically, but he might be there. Uh, and same with uh, Neela. They've just been working nonstop on the details of these pieces. So I sent Rebecca a text saying that we were singing, Leslie was singing her praises, Anita was singing her praises. I'm sorry, did I say I sent Leslie a text? Rebecca, mm -hmm. I sent Rebecca a text, but I wonder if next time she's present with us, we can also express our gratitude to her directly. That'd be great. Great. I miss this. Yeah. Well, until the next meeting. Exactly, which could come sooner than we think. Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, but just to, pro sorry, protocol. Oh. I, I've revised the resolution. I, I think I captured what the board did. Woody has the redrafts. I think Ruth, if you could look at them and see if you think it's accurate, we'll, we'll want Sarah to sign as the secretary once you've agreed that the edits I just did conform to what you think the board just did. So the proposal is that Woody can share the draft, the edits with you, Sarah, Ruth, if that's okay, and you, you, you can sign off on them and then Sarah can sign if she's also comfortable with them. I think I changed 10 words or 20 words, nothing much. This is that overall package that you're talking about where you inserted number eight, right? I inserted number eight. I've attached the Weingart resolutions because they wanted a specific, they want us to bless their form. So it's now attached to those resolutions as a form and there's a reference to it in the text. Again, 20 words of edits that Woody has. Okay, so it's- and if, you're, if you want to change it, we'll change it. But the idea okay. is we want to end okay. up with something we'll that Sarah's comfortable yep. signing. We'll okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you everybody for uh, making the time, for getting all this done. Great job. I'm sure you'll be hearing from us. <laughs> and vote, vote, vote. Um, and uh, happy Halloween. Oh, you got to officially. officially. I, know. I know. So the good news is we actually wrap all this up. We are finished. We don't uh, need open session. We don't need a break. Um, everyone go on your merry way. 
The Seed LA Board of Directors meeting is officially adjourned. 10.08. Great job, everybody. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. See y'all soon. Everyone. Bye. Be safe. You too. Much, everybody. Take care.